guys, so today's video today is I'm taking you through, through one of my projects that I actually did when I was trying to learn Python. Um, it was a project that predicts the Super Bowl winner for the current year. So I ran the model after the regular season and before the playoffs to predict who would actually be the Super Bowl winner. So it's that simple. I trained it off um, of team statistics that I got from um, ProReference.com. I matched up the season statistics on season statistics for Super Bowl winners for the past 20 years. So I would take a team's season statistics and I would have a binary column that says, did they win the Super Bowl? Yes or no. I trained the model on that. And then I tested the model on season statistics for this year where the Super Bowl winner hasn't been determined yet. And it outputs a probability that a team will win the Super Bowl. Simple, fun, very cool, interesting results. So now that I have a lot more modeling experience, I do want to beef up this model a lot. So that's why this is part one. I'm showing you what I'm working with and I'm trying to tell you where it's gonna be going. So some of the limitations of my model, of course, is that, like I just said, it's only trained on season statistics, regular season statistics from the past 20 seasons. There's no playoff statistics, which I think if you're working at ESPN or NFL.com or something like that, they probably do inc incorporate that a lot, looking at how teams have fared in the playoffs in past seasons. Some teams do better in the playoffs, some teams do work. That's something that needs to be incorporated. Second of all, my predictions did not factor in who actually was eligible to make the playoffs. So in a lot of my predictions, you'll see that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or the Dallas Cowboys had a pretty high prediction of making the Super Bowl for last year, and those teams didn't make the playoffs. The model obviously doesn't know about divisions or wild card seeding or anything like that, or who else is in the NFC that's already made it and who else is in the NFC that already made it. It only takes into account their regular season statistics. So I would just manually remove them, which is something that I want to automate more. I'm thinking about using something some sort of optimizer that understands how the seeding works and will only take into account teams that are eligible for the playoffs. That's something I need to work on also. And going back to what I was talking about, the Buccaneers showed up high in a lot of my prediction rankings because they actually had the number three ranked offense in terms of yardage and touchdowns and other things like that. What they didn't have on offense was a good turnover ratio. They had 41 turnovers the entire season. That's what killed them. That's why they lost all those games. And they also didn't have a good defense. So it's interesting to see what different types of models were factoring like offensive yardage and outputs and other things like that more than turnovers and defense. And for that reason, boosting up the, um, the Buccaneers rankings and causing other ones to fall. The majority of my time was spent learning Python. It was a very fun way to learn Python. I love the NFL. So working with data that you're passionate about and you're interesting and helps you learn a lot. But the modeling was, it wasn't basic, but it wasn't as advanced as it could be. I spent so much time learning the language that I didn't have a crazy amount of time to spend modeling. And honestly, using the scikit-learn package is very easy. You can pretty much just slap code onto the end of your data pre-processing once you've done that correctly, and you'll output a, a pretty effective model that you will see. My models were pretty effective, um, except for the ones that predicted the Ravens and Patriots to win. Those went to garbage. But I'm an Eagles fan, so I guess I can't really talk. Overall, it, it was pretty effective. It was a very fun process, so I want to take you through that. If you have any suggestions or comments to help me make this better, I'm all for it. I want to make this as good as I can. I actually can't wait to rerun it again this season to see how well it does. Because when I was running the models last season and I was seeing who was being predicted as winners, again, mostly it was the Patriots, Ravens, and Chiefs. It was really fun because I started rooting for those teams and I was saying like, you know, this model's got to be right. You know, I got to I got to crack the code and those teams let me down, except for the Chiefs. The Ravens lost in the first and the Patriots lost in the first. Much more upset that the Ravens lost in the first. I was very glad. I, was, I had mixed emotions about seeing the Patriots go because I really wanted to see them lose in the first round, but I didn't want to see my model perform less well. So let me take you through the code right now. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see me do more sports prediction and sports modeling because that's something I'm very passionate about. I could talk about that forever. So if you want to see more videos, please smash that like button and please subscribe. Okay, so I'm going to start walking you guys through the code right now. So first, right here, 
is where I actually got my um, season statistics from. It's a site, it's called profootballreference.com. This is the only site I use to pull my statistics. So I, I would go here and I would click on something like team offense and it would show me this is for the 2020 season. I would take the data for the um, offensive statistics and I would put them all into CSV files. And I did that for all the offensive statistics for the past 20 seasons. So I would keep going back. And they have this data all the way back to 2020, probably even back to since the NFL started, actually. There's a lot of data here. So I would go all the way back, and I took that for the offensive statistics. And then I also took it for the defensive statistics as well. Where is the um, defensive statistics? Here we go, defensive stat, team distance, team defense. My Wi-Fi is acting up. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. So you can see it's team statistics also, again, for the entire year. And it just shows aggregated totals. Like for this team, for um, defense, it shows how many yards they gave up, yards per play, uh, passing, rushing, and penalties. It does this for offense and for defense. So these were the statistics that I was using. You can look them up on ProReference.com. It's free and it's available for everybody. So when I took that and I imported it in, you'll see now we're actually looking at the code. It was a lot of <laughs> importing and reading CSVs. Like I said, I was just getting started. Um, the probably, there's definitely a way to web scrape this. That would be much faster, but at the time I didn't know anything about web scraping. So it was just a lot of manual processes and I had to get this done as quick as possible. So you'll see how many CSVs I imported and then I just concatenated them all together. So now I have my final um, data set. This is for defense and then I combined offensive statistics with defensive statistics to create the entire data set. So if you look, this is my this is a snippet of my training data where it'll show how many points they scored, how many yards they have, O stands for offense, how many plays they ran, yards per play, turnovers, which is huge, fumbles lost, and it goes into detail and does the exact same stats on the reverse side. So for their defensive ranking, games played, points allowed on defense, yada, 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 it keeps going. And also, of course, the year is very important because it's 20 years worth of data. So this is my training set. Sorry for the bad uh, naming conventions, but this is actually the, the training set. Now I have my training data. You can see right here, it's the same thing. And you will see me use um, these offensive ranks and defensive ranks a lot in my model outputs. Um, the way the model output looks, um, some people get confused and think that's the only thing I used, but in my model outputs, I just included the rank and the defensive rank in my outputs just because um, it's a, it makes that model output a lot easier to read because of just how of just how it's formatted. And I can kind of give you a little bit of basis of why things are ranked the way they are. For instance, when we get to the model output, you'll see that a lot of the times they predict Tampa Bay having a great chance of winning um, the Super Bowl. And you'll see why is because their offensive numbers are very good. Like look at the amount of total yards. But something that maybe they don't, the model had, didn't factor in that well is the amount of turnovers. Look at how many turnovers they had. That's what was costing Tampa Bay all these games last season. 41 turnovers compared. Like, that's the most by a lot. Now, this is only showing five rows, but that's a ridiculous amount. So you can, you can clearly see what different versions of models in the outputs were factoring some things higher than others. And that gets me back to something else that I want to add to this model is feature selection. So when I was doing this, all of these inputs were just input into the model. I didn't do any feature analysis or any PCA, any, um, any principal component analysis. That's something that I want to do now that I'm revamping and beefing up this model. And then I took data for the past um, 20 years of Super Bowl winners. So I just pulled the um, past Super Bowl winners. It was in a very non-friendly format so pretty much I had to pull the Super Bowl winners from each year and then I just appended that back on to my training debt set 
I appended that back onto this, and now there's a there would be a column at the end. Um, I don't think you'll see it here, but it'll be, it'll be a column at the end, and it'll be like Super Bowl winner. Did they win it? Yes, is one. Um, they didn't win it is zero for no. So and that made my complete training data. And then we actually get into the modeling. Oh, here we go. There's the actual thing. Super Bowl, did they win it? Yes or no? So obviously the target variable is Super Bowl. And a little more data manipulation stuff. Uh, the, um, the data was standardized right here. Two modeling methods that I'm showing right here is logistic regression and add a boost. Um, I experimented with random forests and different types of boosting methods, but I'm just showing these two. So now here's some very basic code to show you how to set up the model. Um, I experimented, I changed around the parameters, but really there wasn't much to train with. Um, there wasn't many parameters to um, experiment with with logistic regression. And here is an example of some of my outputs. Right here, I'll actually pull up. This is for logistic regression right here. So this is the fun part where we actually look at the modeling part. So this model predicted that the New England Patriots had the best chance of winning the Super Bowl, which is not a bad prediction. If you look at the rankings, these are ordered by likelihood to win the Super Bowl. They're actually not bad. Look, Patriots, Chiefs, Ravens, Saints, Cowboys. These are some, these are the, obviously the best teams in the leagues. These were the teams that made the playoffs. But I'm going to get into something else. Probably the last thing that I need to add into my model is some sort of optimization based on who actually made the playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys had great numbers, but they didn't even make the playoffs. So I had just been manually removing um, teams that didn't make the playoffs. So that's something that I need to add again into my uh, model. But if you just look at this one, the second highest team to win the Super Bowl was actually the Chiefs, and they actually won the Super Bowl. So, hey, that's a good sign that actually the model did a pretty decent job for logistic regression. And other teams right around them, the Ravens, ugh, broke my heart losing in the first round. Um, I had other models that were run that a lot of them picked the Ravens to win, and I really did want the Ravens to win, even though I'm an Eagles fan. But I really did want them to go all the way. Now, real quick... Let's go back to the code real quick and I will show you back to the Ada boosting part. This is me messing around with Ada boost models where I experiment with a different type of uh, base classifier. I had a few notes um, talking about which one was better. Um, when, I do a, when I do a video actually on Ada boosting, I'll go much more into it than just this. I'm just showing you an overview of the code. But I experimented with Adaboost, and let's see our results. So this is one of the Adaboost models I ran. For each one, I probably ran like seven different models because there's no real way to evaluate it until the, um, the Super Bowl winner is actually determined. So I would do a lot of um, testing for accuracy and precision and things like that. But like, you know, when in real cases, scenarios, sometimes it's really hard to, to see if that's really a good indicator of how good the model is. So I did, a, obviously there were performance metrics on the modeling, but you know, how accurate was that really? So, and you know, anything can happen in sports. So now if you look at the Adaboost model, the Patriots are actually predict, had the highest prediction to win. Thank God they didn't win the Super Bowl. Then Baltimore Ravens were number two. And you can see why, this is why I included the offense rank and defensive rank because Baltimore Ravens were really high up because they had the highest ranked office in the third ranked defense. So that's why they were predicted, they had the second highest prediction. And you see other good teams that were favorited to win too. The 49ers, you know, they were a very good team too. Very good, strong rushing attack, great defense, a lot of offensive weapons. And of course the Kansas City Chiefs who can just put up points, more points than anyone. I was actually quite surprised to see their offensive rank was only four, maybe because they only have to pay for three quarters because they're blowing out teams. But that I was surprised to see that. But this model had the Chiefs at number f four, right? So again, not, not a terrible model. Both models that I did, um, Green Bay Packers and Tennessee Titans were a lot further down the list, which is something that happened no matter what model I was running. So like 
kind of makes sense. Everybody was saying the Packers were the worst 13-3 team in, in history, which I think is kind of unfair because they definitely were a very good team. They had, a, I mean, you have Aaron Rodgers, Devontae, and Aaron Jones. So they didn't have a, they had missed a few other pieces. But when you have that, I mean, you can compete with anybody. They ultimately got blown out by the 49ers, but I would have ranked them a little higher in my head. And the Tennessee Titans, I think they finished the season at 9-7, and seven, so it's not a surprise to me that they were ranked this low. They went on a crazy run. They're a team that's built for the playoffs. I mean, they run the ball a lot, they can, and their offense won't slow down at all in cold weather. And they had a very good defense at the time, too. That's a playoff-type team. So hopefully my model this season will do a better job capturing these teams that may have been slept on a little bit that ultimately ended up making it to the championship games. So I will continue. So I'll run the model, and I'm very excited to let you guys know my results. Now you see what I'm working with right now. Again, I'm just gonna beef up this whole process, add a lot of things to it, and make it as accurate as I possibly can, and rerun it before the playoffs start. So when I do rerun this model, I'll get back to you guys and show you what the results are. Hopefully, it'll be better. Hopefully. These teams won't be letting my model down. If you want to see more sports prediction and sports analysis videos and more sports modeling videos, please like and subscribe. I can talk about that stuff all day. That's stuff I'm very passionate about when it comes to NFL and NBA modeling, stuff that I love. I do all my projects on sort of things like that. So please let me know if you want to see more videos like that. And let me know by liking, subscribing, and commenting any suggestions or anything else that you want to see. Also, get those NFC East jokes in while you still can because our division is going to be good next season.